Hi guys, and welcome to a Hector Lecture Guide to the second boss of the new Criterion dungeon, Another Sildan Subterrain. This is the Gladiator. Before you begin this fight, you and your group want to agree spread positions. You can use the exact same ones that you used for Silky. You also want to agree upon quadrants. My group just rotates clockwise from their spread positions. Finally, for chain breaks near the end, you're going to want to have an agreed pair to go north and an agreed pair to go south. This should be one support and one DPS, and assuming you have a tank and a melee, have your tank and melee together so they can have more uptime. The fight starts with Flash of Steel. This is a fairly hard-hitting raid-wide, but there's no bleed to worry about this time. The big starting mechanic of this is Spectre of Might. The boss will always spawn two clones of itself up in the northern corners that are about to perform dashes similar to what you'll have seen in the variant dungeon version of this fight. Let's break this down. Eventually, when these are fully charged, they're going to dash forward like this, cleave in front of them, and then immediately afterwards, cleave behind them. The increased difficulty in Criterion comes from the fact that two of them go off at the same time, meaning you need to find where the two of them are going to converge, and then dodge both cleaves at the same time. The actual dodge is really simple. You're just moving directly south or north, uh, in this case south because you're moving away from where the ad started. But figuring out where to start to begin that dodge is the tricky bit. The floor patterns that are visible when the boss ads are going to do their dash look like this, with arrows and yellow lines. You're then going to see them start to charge up in three waves. When the first wave happens, when you see them start to charge, this tells you that the ads are going to go to at least that first yellow line. The second wave of charges happen, and you notice that one of the ads has charged with an orange flash. This means they're fully charged. We now know that the ad on the top left is going to charge to this yellow line here, the second one on its path. While you're learning this, you might want to immediately position behind that line as soon as you see one flash orange. Then when you see the third flash, and the third ad now flashes orange, we're going to now go towards the third yellow line of that ad. You're looking for where those two lines meet. That's going to be where we're doing our dodge. Slide down in that direction, wait for the ads to do their first dash, and then dodge towards the wall. Let's look at another possible pattern. Here comes the first flash, and we immediately see an orange from the top right ad. That means we know now to stand behind the first yellow line for that ad. The second flash happens, and now we immediately see the yellow, the orange flash for the top left ad. We now know it's going to its second yellow line. The third flash isn't going to happen. There's nothing going to happen during that, so you get a little bit more time as we position between the two, wait for the first attack, and then move towards the wall. Immediately after the first set happens, the boss casts Spectre of Might again, and the entire thing gets flipped with the ads happening from now the southern corners. First flash, we immediately position behind a line because we saw an orange flash. Second flash. Now, as you get good at this, as soon as you don't see an ad turn orange on the first or second, you know that it's going to turn orange on the third, so you can position already as if it is turning orange. The third flash happens, and we wait for the attacks. After the attack, this time we dodge north towards the northern wall, away from where the ad started. And that's how you deal with Spectre of Might. This is going to be followed shortly by Sculptor's Passion. This is a line AoE that targets a random player. The first player in line is going to take Tank Buster style damage, so it should be the tank, preferably with a cooldown. Immediately afterwards, the boss casts Mighty Spite, and this is just a Tank Buster. It hits hard, but it does not cleave. Just make sure you pop plenty of cooldowns. Next up is Curse of the Fallen, and I'm going to have the party list up in the top left so that you can see the debuffs that appear, as this is a debuff mechanic. Every player is going to get one debuff, the purple one here, that means that they're going to have a small spread AoE when that goes off. One player is going to have another one that looks like a stack marker, that is a stack uh, that preferably is taken by three players. It can be survived with two or even one just by themselves with enough mitigation, but it's more comfortable if you can find a way to do it with three. The other debuff is a player that at the same time as the stack goes off is dropping puddles that repeatedly explode. My recommendation is to have that player just not join the stack and the other three players join the stack. These debuffs will all have a timer. The spreads go off at the same time, the stack and the puddle debuff also go off at the same time. 
These are always going to be as a short and a long, but the order can be reversed. Currently, what we're looking at is short debuff is the spread, long debuff is the stack. So we spread first and stack second with the player with the blue melee, in this case, not joining the stack. At the same time that this is going off, the boss is doing a charging up uh, chariot style AoE. When you see one flash, that means that the chariot would be the, the yellow line, the first line from the middle. Second flash, this is the orange one. The party now knows to stand behind the second line, the orange line. There is no third flash. The group is already spread to their spread positions, and the spread will go off at the same time that the chariot does from the boss. The chariot is immediately followed by a dynamo, so it's an out followed by an in. All this means is find the correct line to stand behind and move in after it goes off. It goes off with the spreads, and now we're going to move in, and at the same time, the three players are going to stack the other one is just going to move in far enough to not be hit by the out, uh, the in attack. There goes the dynamo. And now, don't forget, if you are the puddle player, melee in this case, after the stack and the puddle go off, to make sure you move out of the puddle that's going to keep hitting. Let's show this again, but with some things reversed. So here's Curse of the Fallen again. This time, the timers show that the stack goes off first and the spread second. So the party's all going to stack up, except for the player who can't stack because they've got the repeated puddle debuff. One flash would be yellow line. Two flashes would be orange line. Three flashes, that's orange for the boss is done, so we all go to the third line, the red line. Wait for the out. And now the stack has gone off with that, so the party is going to spread as they move in. Just spread towards your usual spread position. You don't have to get very far to be able to be spread enough. After all this goes off, the boss will cast another Flash of Steel, so stack up, heal, and mitigate. Next up is Hateful Visage. For this, everybody's going to want to be within their own quadrant for the start of it. The boss spawns a bunch of stone heads around the arena that start to prepare some line AoE attacks. What can be confusing from this is the ground patterns that you see. I strongly recommend ignoring the sort of silvery gold patterns on the floor and instead focus on the orbs in the stone statue's mouth. Look at the three corner, bottom left, for the healer to explain this. You'll notice that within their quadrant, there are two statues, both with a silver orb in their mouth. If I show the path of their line AoEs, it looks like this. As a result, the healer is going to stand where they currently are in the only safe portion of that quadrant. Every player will have one little quarter of their quadrant safe. They need to find that and stand there. The boss will now cast Wrath of Ruin and spawn orbs that are just going to cause checkerboard AoEs. You can ignore these because the checkerboard AoEs show their telegraph still. And nothing beside remains will be a spread that goes off near the end. It's why we're already in our own quadrants. If you are spreading like we've done here, there's nothing to do about it. As soon as you see the checkerboard telegraphs, stay near to where you are, but dodge into the safe spot. Right about here is when the marker for the spreads come. Dodge the first bit of the checkerboard as the lasers go off. And now dodge the second checkerboard and make sure you don't go to the same square as anyone else. And that's it. That's the entirety of that one. Another flash of steel raid wide to mitigate and heal through. And now we get a cursed visage. For this one, everybody gets debuffs. One player will get a double golden debuff, that's the tank. One gets a double silver debuff, that's the melee and two players will get both a gold and a silver. The stone statues spawn again, and now, instead of dodging line AoEs, you're going to go to whichever quadrant will allow you to cleanse your debuff. You cleanse your debuff by getting hit by the opposite color. So for instance, the tank has double golden, they are going to go stand in the intersection of the two silver lasers. Only one quadrant will work for them. Same thing for melee, they've got double silver, they need to go get hit by two gold. So they find the quadrant, and the corner of that quadrant, where they can get hit by two golden lasers. The other two players need to find the other quadrants, the one where you can get hit by both a gold and silver. It's possible that you won't find both safe spots in time. That's not a problem. If instead you end up like this with both players, with the gold and silver one debuff, standing in the same quadrant, this is perfectly fine. I'm going to show you this just so I can show you how you would adjust at the end to deal with it. Wrath of Ruin happens, and again we're going to get the checkerboard AoE. And nothing beside remains means at the very end we need to be spread. Wait for the checkerboard to appear and dodge, once again staying where you'll get hit by the correct lasers. And... 
If you look at ranged and healer, one of them's going to go more north, one of them's going to go more south to indicate where they're about to dodge to at the end, because now for the second end of the checkerboard, they need to go to separate squares. If they go to the same one, they won't be able to spread enough. But there's more than enough time. This isn't even tight dodge-wise, so don't stress if you've gone to the same square at the beginning. Heal up and mitigate for another flash of steel, and prepare for one final new mechanic, Curse of the Monument. Once again, I'm going to put the party list up so you can see the debuffs we get. Stack middle for the start of this. Every player is going to get three debuffs. A one or a two, a chain debuff, and a giant explodey AoE. You can completely ignore all of these at the start. All that matters is to remember what we agreed at the beginning. Tanks and melees will run north, the healer and range will run south. You're going to see a pattern of AoE start to appear on the ground, immediately start to run north and south, and look for the last corner to get hit, move towards that corner. Your chain should break about then. Now all you're doing is waiting for the AoEs to disappear so you can dodge into middle. With that done, this is where we're now going to look at our debuffs. Here it matters who's a 1 and who's a 2. If you're doing this in a static or with something with voice callouts, uh, this isn't too much of a problem. You can always just call where you're going. But if not, what I recommend you do is check your partner's debuff. In this case, tank check the melee, healer check the range. If you are both 1 or both 2, the DPS should swap. If you do this, you make sure that you have a really easy time assigning tower positions for the next mechanic. As is currently the case, no swap is needed, so everybody just stays roughly near the same corner where they just came from. The boss goes to middle and spawns, uh, casts Colossal Wreck, spawning two towers. These will either start east-west or north-south. If you are a one, you cannot take this tower because you will explode just before and you'll have a magic vuln up so the tower will kill you. So twos are going to hop in the tower next to them. Ones are going to go to the other free cardinal, in this case, north and south. So healer and melee are going to jump into the tower next to them. Tank and range go to north and south, respectively, near to the corner they went to originally. The first AoEs are going to go off and immediately afterwards the first towers. Be aware these AoEs are giant, so go to the edge. And then you swap. Now tank and range take the tower. Don't worry, their magic vuln falls off just in time. And healer and melee are out for their AoEs to explode. And that's the mechanic. Everything from this point onwards is just repeated mechanics. You're going to get another flash of steel raid wide, another entire specter of might combo. So both first the ad spawning in the north and doing their dashes, then the ad spawning in the south, exactly the same as I showed earlier. You get another sculptor's passion line AoE. Remember to have your tank in the front and use cooldowns. One more flash of steel raid wide, and then finally a slow cast that serves in the enrage. Kill the boss before then a rage goes off. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful. Uh, let, please let me know in the comment section if you find any ways to be able to do this a little bit easier. If you've got any suggestions, uh, any mechanics that I've not explained clearly enough, please let me know if you've got any questions, guys. But I hope you found this useful, and uh, I'll see you soon for the third fight guide. Take care, guys.